Okay, one of the big things we've been talking about in this chapter is forces, obviously, and uh, chapter 8, part 3. And I just want to go over really quickly what forces are so that we can uh, be very clear about that. Okay, here's a definition of a force. A force is a push or pull that causes an object to change its motion. So if it's going to change its motion, it's going to accelerate, and that means speed up, slow down, or change its direction. And forces typically result from the interaction between two objects, right? You want to push something, you got to actually interact with it. So to speak, you want to get a ball to accelerate, you got to kick it. You want to get a book across the table, you got to push it. And like I said earlier, it's very important forces cause acceleration. That's kind of the way we've been talking about it in class. Cause things to speed up, slow down, or change direction. And forces kind of be, can be placed in two different categories. Um, one is contact forces. Contact forces are when two things are actually touching, they're in contact with each other. Non-contact forces are the things are not actually touching. So these are the typical forces that we deal with mostly in class. Um, let's just go over here and talk about this non-contact force. If an object is an object, if it's a thing, if it has mass, it's going to have a gravitational force, unless it's way up in space and there's no gravity or a very small gravity. But when we're on Earth, kicking a ball, sliding a book, everything is going to have a gravitational force. Has mass, has gravity. Uh, we don't talk too much about electrical force. We don't talk too much about magnetic forces, so I'm just going to skip those. Um, the next force is the normal force. The normal force is results from when two objects are when one, one object, excuse me, when one object is um, placed on top of another object, like a book is placed on a solid desk, a bowl is placed on a desk, you're standing on the desk. I kind of think of it as the force that causes you not to fall through the floor or the book not to fall through the table. It pushes up opposite the gravitational force. And if it's just standing still, then those two forces are equal, but opposite. Frictional force. Frictional force, I think I would say, is the force that causes things to come to a stop. As you know, Newton's first law says, objects in motion stay in motion, objects rest stay at rest, except one acted upon by an outside force. And this is typically the outside force on Earth here that causes things to come to a rest. When you roll something across the table, it usually comes to a rest. When you slide something across the table, it comes, comes to a rest. You take your foot off the gas in a car, the car is going to come to a rest, all because of friction. No friction keeps going on and on forever. Applied force. Applied force, I think of it as the force that when you put your hand on something and push it, that's an applied force. You push a book, you push a crate, you push somebody, you push on something, that's an applied force, where you actually have your hand, you're actually applying a force. Air resistance comes from air. You know, something is going very quickly into the wind, that's air resistance. A skydiver is falling out of the sky, usually has air resistance. Sometimes when we have small things and they're relatively smooth, we say we neglect air resistance because it's pretty negligible. Spring forces, we haven't talked about that much in class, but something is bouncing up and down on a spring, that force is ex being exerted by the spring. Tension is a one sometimes people have a hard time with. A tension force is a tension that strength, uh, force that comes from a string, a cable, a, uh, a chain, something like that. Right? An elevator, an elevator suspended by a cable, a cable is exerting a tension force on the elevator. You have a dog with a chain around its collar, on its collar, you're pulling the dog. It's the chain that's exerting the force on the dog, not your hand, because your hand is on the, on the chain. Your, force exerts a, a, your hand exerts a force on the chain, but the chain exerts the force on the dog. So that's tension, cable, string, anything like that. Okay? So those are the forces, and those are the kinds of forces, contact, non-contact. Okay, forces is a measure. Force is measured using the metric unit known as the Newton for Sir Isaac Newton. Capital N is the abbreviation. And formally speaking, one Newton is the amount of force required to give a one kilogram mass an acceleration of one meter per second squared. So if you have a one kilogram object and you want to make it go faster and faster, you have to apply a force. If you're applying one Newton, at some point it's going one meter per second, then its speed goes, a second later goes to two meters per second, and a second later the speed goes to three meters per second. So that's a Newton. And just to remember, a force is a vector quantity. Right? It has a magnitude, a length of the arrow, and it has a direction, which way the arrow is pointing, north, south, east, west, negative, positive, the way you're going, the way you're not going, the opposite of the way you're going, all that kind of stuff means that it is a vector. All right? So that's the basics of forces. Okay, well, now you know what they are. Now you know the definition of a force, now you know the different kinds of forces, and now you know kind of the formal uh, de um, units, what it is exactly, and that it's a vector. All right? So there you go. Thank you very much.